Good morning, and welcome to Central Presbyterian Church's online worship service for this Sunday, January 3rd, 2021. I'm your lay reader, Zach Cosner. I invite you to download the bulletin for today's service, which can be found at the link in the description of this video on Facebook and on YouTube. You can also head to our website, www.centralprespb.com. Look for the publications link at the top of the webpage. Scroll down to see the day's date, and then you can go ahead and open that PDF up and uh, go ahead and print it. Uh, if you would, now that you've printed the bulletin for today's service, uh, I ask you to, down, uh, to bring your attention to the announcements found on the back of the bulletin. Uh, one added announcement that got deleted by accident um, the uh, session is still preparing the budget for 2021. Uh, they will be uh, presenting it to the congregation very shortly. Uh, we do appreciate your patience uh, in this matter. Uh, the session of CPC has decided to stick with virtual services for the foreseeable future. Uh, keep in contact with us via social media with the username Central Prez PB or on our website for announcements about any special services and when we plan to resume in-person worship. Archives of our online services can be found on our Facebook and our YouTube. Links to each are on our website. Again, that's centralprespb.com. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to worship the Lord. Sing aloud with gladness, says the Lord. We praise the Lord and call on God's name. See, I am going to gather my people from the farthest parts of the earth. We come with songs and dancing to feast at the table of the Lord. No more will they stumble and weep, for I am their shepherd, and I will lead them home. God has turned our mourning into joy and our sorrow into gladness. Praise the Lord. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I invite you to join together with us, to, uh, to join together to say the prayer of confession found in your bulletin, and then silently. Emmanuel, you have come to dwell among us, full of grace and truth, but we have failed to welcome you. You are the light of the world, but we try to hide ourselves from you. You are the giver of endless life, but we have refused your gift. You called and claimed us as your own, but we failed to accept you. Forgive us, Lord, Fill us with grace upon grace so that we may believe in you and live lives that bear witness to the truth that we are indeed children of God. Amen. And now silently. Amen. The good news in Christ is that when we face ourselves and God with the awareness of our need, we are given grace to grow, encouraged to continue the journey. Friends, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Now let's turn it over to Rose Von Tunglin for this week's children's sermon. Good morning, everyone. I hope you've had a good week. Today I want to talk about finding Jesus. You know, Sometimes we're not quite sure how to go about to find Jesus. And it's kind of like if you were taking a trip, you would need a map or someone who had been there before to tell you how to get there. But, you know, back in Jesus' time, they didn't have maps, they didn't have GPS, and nobody had seen Jesus or knew where he was. So the wise men had to figure out how to find him. And then they remembered they saw a star. And in the star, they figured they could follow the star and find Jesus that way. But they also remembered that in the prophets had also told and had reminded people that Jesus would be here, that the new Messiah would be here, and to follow the star and to... Uh, so that's what they did. They followed the star and they found Jesus there in Bethlehem. And they gave him their gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. Now today, people are still trying to find Jesus. And we have people who can help us do that. We have Sunday school teachers. We have pastors. But most importantly, we have the Bible. And the Bible will help us find Jesus. All you have to do 
is try to read your Bible each day so that you too can find Jesus. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that the wise men followed your star and the things that the prophets had said. We are glad they found Jesus. We ask that you too will help us find Jesus and to keep him in our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thanks, Rose, for that children's sermon. Now let's go ahead and turn it over to Reverend Tim Reeves for this week's a message, The Children of God, A People of New Beginnings. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Our first reading this morning comes from the 31st chapter of Jeremiah, beginning with the 7th verse and proceeding through verse 14. Let us listen for the word of the Lord. <clears throat> for thus says the Lord, sing aloud with gladness for Jacob and raise shouts for the chief of the nations. Proclaim, give praise and say, save, O Lord, your people, the remnant of Israel. See, I am going to bring them from the land of the north <clears throat> and gather them from the farthest parts of the earth. Among them the blind and the lame, those with child and those in labor together. A great company, they shall return here. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will bring them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Hear the word of the Lord, O nations, and declare it in the coastlands far away. Say, he who scattered Israel will gather him and will keep him as a shepherd, a flock. For the Lord has ransomed Jacob and has redeemed him from hands too strong for him. They shall come and sing aloud on the height of Zion, and they shall be radiant over the goodness of the Lord, over the grain, the wine, and the oil, and over the young of the flock and the herd. Their life shall become like a watered garden, and they shall never languish again. Then shall the young women rejoice in the dance, and the young men and the old shall be merry. I will turn their mourning into joy. For I will comfort them and give them gladness for sorrow. For I will give their priests their fill of fatness, and my people shall be satisfied with my bounty, says the Lord. We turn now to our second reading from the first chapter of the Gospel according to John, beginning with the first verse and proceeding through verse 18. <clears throat> Again, let us listen for the word of the Lord. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light, so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as a father's only son, full of grace and truth. 
John testified to him and cried out, this was he of whom I said, he who comes after me ranks ahead of me because he was before me. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. The law indeed was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God, the only Son, who is close to the Father's heart, who has made him known. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. <coughs> Open now our hearts and minds, O God, by the power and presence of your Holy Spirit so that as your word is proclaimed this day, we may hear with joy what it is you would have us hear, that hearing we might believe, and that believing we might live lives of richer and fuller service, glorifying you here on earth as you are glorified in heaven. Amen. So I wish there was some wonderful place called the land of beginning again, where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all our poor selfish grief could be dropped, like a shabby old coat at the door and never put on again. That poem by Louisa Fletcher Tarkington expresses the longing of most of us for an occasion to start over. Because life has a way of becoming filled with mistakes and heartaches and grief. And there are times in all of our lives when we desperately need to begin again. Our texts for this morning are in their own ways about beginning again. Jeremiah gives voice to the deep longings and profound hope that God will once again God, gather God's faithful remnant from exile. In the first part of this text, God addresses the exiles and invites them to take part in a new reality rooted in God's own faithfulness. God is about to intervene in order to liberate God's people, and as a result, a new life for Israel is about to begin. The shame and despair that the people have felt for so long is about to come to an end. I love how verse 9 states it. With weeping they shall come, and with consolations I will bring them back. I will let them walk by brooks of water in a straight path in which they shall not stumble. For I have become a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. The love that God feels and shows to Israel is palpable. It overflows. It cannot be contained. That is even truer in the lesson we have from John's gospel. And haven't we all found that to be true as well? When you love someone, you strain to find ways to make that love known. And throughout the Old Testament, the Jewish people testified to a God constantly straining to reveal that love for us and all creation. Through the prophets and the psalmists, we catch glimpses here and there of the wonder of our being, the wonder of one another, and the wonder of God. But we only see dimly that this God could grasp what it meant to be limited, to hunger and thirst, to know the need for love and security, to fear and to suffer, was beyond the human imagination. And so it's as though God said, I have tried to tell you of my profound love for each of you in so many different ways. But now my actions will speak truth in ways that you can grasp. Or as John's gospel has it, the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. From his fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. No longer could humanity say that our God could not understand what it is like to struggle against the cold or to have to flee to another country or to be betrayed by a friend. 
No longer could humanity say that God could not understand what it is like to grieve the loss of a loved one or to fear suffering and death or to experience the seeming absence of God. Because God has truly walked our walk. God's word of love has truly become flesh, just as the words of the incarnate God would take on flesh as well. And so it was that Jesus did not merely say, I love you to Zacchaeus, for example, but called him down from his tree, offered friendship, and sat down at table with him. Jesus not only spoke of a God of mercy and forgiveness, but extended that forgiveness to a frightened woman standing alone with piles of stones left about her, and to his friend Peter, after Peter had denied even knowing him three times. Jesus not only spoke of God's reign of justice, but he stood in solidarity with the poor and the outcasts. He not only spoke of a God who longs for our wholeness, but he touched lepers and made them clean. He drove out demons that the possessed might know peace. He opened blind eyes and deaf ears and raised people to life. He didn't merely say, I love you to humanity, but rather he picked up a cross, suffered, died, and rose that we might all know not only eternal life, but the true depth of his love. Or as John's gospel has it, to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God who were born not of blood or of the will of the flesh or of the will of man, but of God. He gave power to become children of God. What an amazing gift. What an incredible opportunity for us to begin again. We who once were estranged from God have been welcomed into God's family. <coughs> Writing in his second letter to the Christians in Corinth, Paul clarified this new beginning when he wrote, if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. Everything has become new. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. And I interpret that to mean that just as we have been given the opportunity and the grace to begin again, so too are we to be a people who exhibit the grace of new beginnings to a sinful and broken world. Empowered by the Holy Spirit, we are to proclaim the message of hope and a new life that is the gospel. I'm reminded of some words attributed to St. Teresa of Avila who said, Christ has no body now but yours, no hands but yours, no feet but yours. Yours are the eyes through which Christ's compassion must look out on the world. Yours are the feet with which he is to go about doing good. Yours are the hands with which he is to bless us now. I think what that means is that in our daily striving to be faithful, as children of God, we are called upon to live lives in accordance with God's will. Thus, as God's children, we are called upon to love the least because God loved the least. The book of Proverbs reminds us, speak out for those who cannot speak, for the rights of all the destitute. Speak out, judge righteously, defend the rights of the poor and needy. We are called upon to love the least because God throughout the pages of scripture has revealed a deep compassion in favor of the vulnerable, the weak, the forgotten, the disenfranchised, and for all who live life on the fringes of society. 
we who have been so richly blessed sometimes forget that such people actually comprise a disproportionate number of the world's population. It's a sad truth that the world's wealthiest nations have cut their aid budgets for poor nations in half since 1960. A trend that continues every year. And billions of workers around the world earn less than $2 a day. We are the ones who most often benefit from such exploitation, a reality that is neither just nor moral, but one we seem to think we are entitled to when we scream for lower prices on the goods that we want and demand. We would all do well to remember that because God in Christ became flesh and lived among us, all humanity is valued in God's eyes. We are bound to every other person, especially to the weak and the least among us. And as this new year begins, may it be a time when we all begin anew to love as God loves each one of us. As children of God, we are called upon to marvel at the mystery that God was in Christ, reconciling the world to himself. God has embraced the world and enfolded us in the arms of love. And just as God embraces everyone, so too are we called upon to be just as welcoming and receiving. Too oftentimes, those outside the faith perceive us Christians to be self-righteous, judgmental, and bigoted, however. And I think that's in part because we misconstrue the words, if God be for us, who can be against us, to mean that God is on our side and let our enemies be damned. And so horrible atrocities have been carried out in the name of God and are still being carried out in God's name. Some Muslims do it, so do some Jews, but so do very many Christians. And I fail to understand how the heartless destruction of another or many others in any way glorifies the God of life and love. We would do well to remember that at its core, the message of the incarnation is that God is about the business of not merely tearing down walls, but also of building bridges. Pastor Martin Niemöller, who protested Hitler's anti-Semitic measures and was eventually arrested and imprisoned in a concentration camp, once remarked, it took me a long time to learn that God is not the enemy of my enemies. He is not even the enemy of his enemies. May this new year be a time when we all begin anew to live together in love. So I'll repeat the poem I began at the beginning of this sermon. I wish there were a, some wonderful place called the land of beginning again, where all our mistakes and all our heartaches and all our poor selfish grief could be, grief could be dropped like a shabby old coat at the door and never put on again. For in the incarnation of Christ, we are invited to be reconciled to God and one another, to believe in the power to make all things new, and to live as a people of new beginnings. To God be all the honor, glory, and praise forever. Amen. I would ask now that you would please join me and confirm what it is we believe using the words of the Apostles' Creed that can be found in your bulletin. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, 
the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us now return to God our thanksgiving through our tithes and our offerings, which again will be taken electronically this week. If you would head to our website, www.centralprespb.com, look for the Donate Now link at the top of the webpage. You can make your tithe electronically using a, um, a um, debit or cr uh, credit card. If you'd like to mail a check or money order into the church, we welcome that as well. Uh, you can mail it to 6300 Trinity Drive, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, 71603. It is our right and our greatest joy to give you thanks, eternal God, for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. But we are most grateful for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, of your abiding and sustaining Holy Spirit. For our Lord reconciled us to you and to one another, opening the door to eternal life. Your Holy Spirit continues to confront us, convict us, correct us, and equip us to enter the world and share the good news of your redeeming grace. And so, O oh God, we offer up our time, our talents, our treasures, and indeed our very selves for you to use as you see fit. Until that most glorious day, when at the name of Jesus, every knee in heaven and on earth and under the earth shall bend, and every tongue shall confess him, Lord, to your honor and glory. Amen. At this time, let us share our joys and concerns, uh, which there are several. Um, I was... Uh, I'll mention this week that uh, the wife of our former pastor, Dan Festa, uh, Dr. Laura Festa, uh, was uh, readmitted into hospice. Um, Dan mentioned on Facebook that he appreciates all, uh, all prayers during this um, uh, very um, sad time. We want to continue to pray for Haley Chandler. Um, Haley had her second um, uh, chemotherapy this week. Um, we continue to uh, hold um, Brad Von Tunglin in our prayers. Um, Brad had uh, taken a trip to uh, and stayed several days at UA UAMS this week. Uh, was released Thursday, and um, they're awaiting some test results to, uh, for them to help uh, understand what was happening with Brad that sent him to UAMS. <laughs> so please continue to keep him in your prayers. Um, we want to keep um, a friend of mine, a uh, a sister of a friend of mine, uh, Jory Arbatitis, in our prayers. Um, she is dealing with COVID-19 and, and doing very poorly. Uh, we pray that she uh, she heals quickly. Uh, we also pray that um, Mary Light is recovering from surgery. Um, Linda asked that we please continue to keep Mary, Mary in our prayers. Um, uh, she It appears that she's going to be going back to work this week. Uh, so we pray that she has an uh, easy way of it in the coming days. <clears throat> I was also, um, let's see, I want to, uh, was also asked to um, pray for the quick distribution of the COVID-19 vaccine. Um, I know there has been some hangups in some states and it's going to, uh, it might result in some uh, expiration of vaccines. Uh, we pray that they get all of the distribution um, kinks ironed out so we can get that um, distributed as soon as possible. Uh, which also leads to the prayer that, that we can open church regularly soon, uh, that we can go back to in-person worship. Um, that's very dependent on the distribution of that vaccine. So we want to uh, pray for both of those things. <clears throat> and as always, even as the vaccine is distributed, we want to continue to keep our um, medical professionals, our doctors, nurses, um, EMTs, and our first responders uh, in prayer during this uh, pandemic. Uh, we wanna to continue to pray for the reconciliation of our, of our nation and our world to the Lord uh, so that we may uh, sense his will and do his will in this world. Let us pray. Holy and gracious Father, we give you thanks that the Lord Jesus Christ is in fact the same today as he was yesterday and will be for all of our tomorrows. We pray for the he healing for Brad Von Tunglin, Mary Light, Jory Arbatitis, Haley Chandler, and Dr. Laura Festa. In cases where healing isn't possible, we ask that grace and mercy be granted to those who, who cannot be healed, and, and we, that you provide comfort to those who 
have lost loved loved ones or who are worried about <clears throat> loved ones who are dealing with medical issues. We pray for those who have lost loved ones to the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for our medical professionals and our first responders and um, all of those people we mentioned uh, earlier uh, that you protect those people from COVID-19 and that you uh, be with those who, who have lost loved ones to this horrible pandemic. Uh, we also pray that the vaccine is distributed quickly and fairly. Uh, we ask that, that all of these kinks that have been running, that they have been running into get ironed out so we may return to in-person worship as soon as we can. We also ask that we reconcile our nation and our world to you, O oh Lord, that we, that we do your will and we uh, be examples of your son, Jesus, uh, in these coming days. Give us hope as we strive to be faithful disciples of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go out into the world in peace, to love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power and the presence of God's Holy Spirit. Taking today's message with you, and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.